Uncle Jesse here. This is the very first 3D printer from the folks over at Anchor. That's right, the same Anchor that you're thinking of, the one that makes all those amazing electronics. They're launching their very first 3D printer over on Kickstarter, and it's called the Anchor Make M5. And today, we're gonna be checking out the machine and seeing exactly what it can make. And yes, this actually might be the fastest 3D printer that I've ever worked with, and the prints look beautiful. And before we get started, I wanna mention that today's video is being sponsored by the folks over at Anchor. I'm not gonna be reviewing the Anchor make in today's video, since this is a Kickstarter beta unit. I do not review Kickstarter 3D printers until well after they've been released, and I have a production unit in hand. And if it's your first time here, welcome and consider subscribing. This is the type of content that we normally make here, 3D printing and making fun things. So before we take a look at any of the prints, let me give you a rundown of the actual machine. The assembly process took me probably 10 minutes at most. It was a really straightforward and simple process. There's two main pieces that you're gonna bolt together. Then you're just gonna connect a few different wires. And what I also think is pretty cool is that this is the very first 3D printer that I've ever used that's utilizing USB-C cables to make some of the connection points. The printer has an all aluminum body other than a few plastic and injected molded parts, and it weighs about 24 to 25 pounds, and it's all primarily here in the base, which is gonna help keep it stabilized during those crazy fast print speeds. The filament holder can be mounted on the top or the side of the unit to help aid loading in filament through the side of the unit, which is gonna pass through a filament runout sensor, so if you ever run out of filament, it'll pause the print and allow you to resume after you replace the filament roll. The filament will then pass through the tube into the extruder, which happens to be a direct drive extruder. You'll notice there's lots of plastic molded parts here that you can remove. It does look like there's a handful of bolts that can be removed so that you can get access to some of those things. There's also dual fans along with silicone sock to keep everything nice and cool and clean when you're 3D printing. And the extruder can reach up to temperatures of 260 degrees, which is perfect for PLA, TPU, PETG, and potentially ABS. It has a heated bed that can reach up to temperatures of 100 degrees, and you're gonna be printing directly on a textured PEI magnetic sheet. That's perfect for getting your prints off after they're finished printing. And to make things super simple, they have an auto bed leveling system that has 49 points that it's going to check. The process does take a few minutes to run through, but you don't have to do that with every print. I've literally run that one time after my initial setup and have had great prints ever since. And the build volume for the Anchor Make measures 235 by 235 on the X and Y axis and 250 on the Z. And behind these two aluminum casings here are gonna be your dual rails. They're gonna help support the motors going up and down. And then down below, below the bed, are two belts as well. And by the way, there are openings down there, which I thought were very smart. So if you end up with filament that falls down into those cracks, you have a way to actually brush that out through the bottom. Once you've got the unit powered on, you'll hear a slight hum from the fan. It would be great if that could be disabled until you're actually printing or prepping the printer for printing. The other thing you'll notice here is the actual touchscreen interface where you'll actually be able to connect your printer to the Anchor Make mobile app, which again is still an early beta version of it. There are some very basic functions that allow you to monitor your prints. That's right, you can monitor your prints with a built-in camera on the side that will also take time lapses for you and send you notifications as your printer is printing. You'll also notice along the very top is the USB-C port where you can actually load your USB stick into the 3D printer. The printer also has onboard storage for files. I'm not entirely sure how large that is, but that's great to see that you can actually load files from the USB stick onto the printer directly. And they've also mentioned that they're working on their own slicer that you'll be able to use for the printer that will allow you to wirelessly transfer sliced files from your computer directly to the printer to its onboard storage. The slicers that I ended up using were Simplify 3D and Cura. So you're not gonna be limited to their slicer. However, it does sound like there is gonna be functionality that's gonna be tied to their slicer, like wirelessly sending files from your printer to the machine or creating time lapses from the actual prints that you're working with. That's right, on the mobile app as well, it'll create a time lapse of your 3D prints that you can then view afterwards and potentially post to social media. Again, the app right now is in a beta state. They didn't have the ability to actually post any of those files directly to social media, but I was able to export them and you can see them here on screen. 
On the opposite side of the unit, there's also a status light indicator. So as you're either loading or removing filament or actually printing, you'll see different color LEDs that represent different statuses during the actual print processes. Another thing that they've mentioned that they'll have support for, but is not available at the current time of me testing out the unit here in the beta, is that with that camera, which is a 1080p camera that you can use to monitor your prints via the mobile app anywhere you're at, like here, I'm at my studio here. I was actually able to monitor my prints from from home, which was wild, or even start a print while I was out and about. So that was really cool. But one thing that they're working on having the ability to do is use AI to actually monitor your print. So it will alert you if you're running into a print failure, it will notify you via the mobile app so that you can choose to either continue or stop the print. I also wanted to point out, this is probably the best interpretation of a 3D printing app that is directly tied to a printer that I've ever had the chance to work with. Plus I have direct control over the print. So if I wanted to increase the print temperature, the speed or slow things down, or even the bed temperature, I have access to do that all via the mobile app. And yes, I know you can do that with some other add-ons, but this is all baked directly into the machine and the app works really well on my iPhone 12 Pro. All right, so let's talk about those prints already. The very first thing that I went off and printed was one of their test models that came pre-sliced on the SD card, which was this big old square block that basically printed most of the Z height of the actual printer. The top portion didn't turn out that great. It might've just been some due to some of the settings that they had with the slicer. Also the initial base layers went down super fast and uh, basically the brim that was holding the print in place just didn't look super clean. But the overall print itself is Honestly, it looks fantastic and I'll have the print times on screen for these because I honestly don't remember them off the top of my head. I then printed one of their tolerance tests that came pre-sliced with the unit using the red filament that they supplied. And I was very surprised at how well this printed. There's some very sharp overhangs uh, and very, very little stringing. Unfortunately, I did drop this and broke the little spikes there on the top af well after I had printed this. The tolerances for the little cylinders popped right out as soon as I got them off the build plate, which is really cool to see. And yeah, this just did a, a fantastic job with all the different overhangs. And again, a really clean looking print. So I then wanted to throw down some basic classic 3D printing tests. So I went and printed one of these CHEP cubes here and I printed the first one at 0.28 millimeter layer height with their default slicer settings that they provided to me over in Simplified 3D. This printed in nine minutes. So I went and reprinted it at 0.2 millimeters and that took 14 minutes. And using a digital caliper, it is pretty accurate to 20 millimeters all around. I then went off and printed another classic test print, which is the Benchy. I printed this one initially at 0.28 millimeters. It took 30 minutes to print. I then printed it at 0.2 millimeters and it took 43 minutes. And this might be one of the cleanest looking Benchies that I've ever printed. Everything that I'm printing, I'm printing at the default print speed of 250 millimeters per second. And just to give you a perspective, normally when I 3D print anything on an FDM 3D printer, the max I typically will print at is 60 millimeters per second. So 60 to 50, there's a good bit of difference there in terms of speed and time savings that I'm gonna be able to get off of this machine if it can reliably print. So I then wanted to really test this out and do a direct speed comparison between the Anchor Make and another 3D printer that I like to use. And I decided to use the exact same sliced G code file that I used on the Anchor Make at 0.2 millimeter light. And yeah. Uh, it wouldn't even come close to being able to print it at the speeds that I'm able to print on the anchor make. So this right here was multiple attempts at printing this. Yeah, just did not go well. So I then wanted to see what this thing could actually do by printing one of Eastman's bus, which are typically very, very detailed. And it was able to throw down the base for the statue in one hour and 43 minutes, printed at 0.28 millimeter layer height. I then printed the head at 0.2 millimeter layer height. So a little bit finer detail. And this took one hour and 44 minutes. And then to pull everything together, I printed the main body of the statue at 0.2 millimeter layer height. And it took eight hours and 34 minutes. To say I'm pleased pleased with this is a massive understatement. This printed so amazing 
for this model. Zero supports needed. It helps that Eastman is just a, a, an amazing designer. But again, the details are typically really sharp on his models. And this was able to produce a beautiful print at 0.2 millimeter layer height for the head and the body. And again, 0.28 for the base. I also use this really cool dual color filament. So as you move it from left to right, you see the color shift between the two different filament colors. I then went off and printed these rotating ring toys, which is a fun little fidget toy at 0.18 millimeter layer height. And this took one hour and 17 minutes to print. And all of the clearances and tolerances passed with this and I'm able to freely spin these around after taking it off the print bed. I then went off and tested printing remotely via the mobile app while I was at home directly to the machine here that was in my studio. I was able to print Flexi Factory's articulating fish at 0.28 millimeter layer height, and it took just under two hours to 3D print. And everything articulates beautifully on this print after taking it off the print bed. I just love how clean all of these prints are looking off this machine. Now, the last one I wanna mention is this amazing 3D printed Crystal Dragon by Cinderwing 3D. This turned out so nice, printed at 0.28 millimeter layer height, and it took 10 hours and 38 minutes to print. Now, if you follow me over on TikTok or anybody basically else on TikTok that's doing 3D printing, you'll know that these prints are so popular and I actually sell these over on my Etsy shop. So this is a perfect use case of this machine because I'm able to print this file drastically faster on this machine and still maintain amazing print quality, which means I'm gonna be able to print more of these in one day, which means I'll be able to fulfill more orders with this machine than I would with some of my other 3D printers. And just to give you a frame of reference, I typically will print these on another FDM printer, again, at 0.28 millimeter layer height at 60 millimeters per second, and it takes me over 16 hours to 3D print. So I'm saving almost six hours of print time by using this machine. And while I did see a lot of amazing prints off of the Anchor Make, I did have some feedback for the team based on the beta unit that I've tested. Like the ability to disable the fans when the printer's not actively printing, some basic UI improvements, most of which are tied to some of the verbiage that you'll find throughout the interface, and some additional functionality that I'd like to see added into the unit itself, like the ability to preheat the extruder and the bed. I'd also like to see some more details around basic printer maintenance when it comes to repairing parts that might have worn down over time or even cleaning out a clogged extruder. Also that textured PEI build plate, it would be great if there was a smooth side on one end and the textured on the other. I'm also still very interested to see how all of the AI aspects of the printer will work out once it's released and available so that you can get more intelligent updates from that mobile app of your prints as they're actually printing. And I also haven't had the opportunity to test out any other materials outside of a variety of different PLAs that I've tested in today's video. So I'm definitely gonna be following up with another video here with you all in the next few weeks, showing how this can work with TPU or PETG. And if you have suggestions on things you'd like to see, let me know down below because I'd be interested in printing and showing it off here. And I also wanted to mention that again, if you're interested in more information on this, you can find out more information by heading over to anchormake.com and checking out their Kickstarter campaign. And more than likely, I will be picking up one of these for myself. This will be the very first Kickstarter 3D printer campaign that I'm actually going to back. And again, if you're interested in more information about the details of the Anchor Make 3D printer and their Kickstarter campaign, I'll have links to those down below. But let me know what you think in the comments about this 3D printer and if you'd be interested in picking one up for yourself. Hey, thanks again for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye now.